So, have you tried server-side Kotlin? In this video, we're going to discuss server-side Kotlin, and we're going to review four frameworks that you can use to start writing your backend services using Kotlin. Hey devs, it's Nate here. If you've been following the channel, you probably saw that recently I uploaded a video talking about writing server-side Kotlin with Ktor. If you didn't see it, you can find that video up here in the card. Now, I realized when I jumped into that video that I just jumped right into Ktor. And if you're completely new to the idea of writing Kotlin uh, for your server applications, then you might have been a little bit lost. So in this video, I wanted to take a step back and talk about server-side Kotlin in general, and then specifically we'll review four frameworks that you can use to write Kotlin for your backend services. So, what are the four frameworks that we're going to be talking about? Well, first off, we're going to discuss Ktor, which again is the framework that I discussed in the previous video. Then we're going to talk a little bit about Spring Boot, which is a very popular Java framework for backend services on the web. Then we're going to be looking at HTTP 4K, which is a Kotlin specific library for server side Kotlin. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up by taking a look at uh, Quarkus which is a JVM framework that has a built-in first-class support for Kotlin as well. Now, before we get too much further into this, have you been using Kotlin on the back end? Have you written any kind of server code with one of these frameworks like Ktor, Spring Boot, Quarkus, etc.? Leave a comment down below. I've been really interested to see what other people's experience has been so far writing Kotlin for the back end. So with that, let's jump into the first framework and talk about Ktor. Okay. So what is Ktor exactly? Ktor is a Kotlin-based framework for writing asynchronous client and server applications using 100% Kotlin. Now, because it's 100% Kotlin, Ktor is somewhat natively cross-platform by nature. And in fact, right now you can support writing client and servers with Ktor that target the JVM. And you can build clients using Ktor that support web, iOS, and Android. And according to the documentation, full native support for writing server code using Kotlin is coming. So this is really exciting because it means potentially you could use the Ktor framework to write Kotlin code that targets native code such as Mac, Linux, uh, any other type of maybe C++ native framework for the web. Uh, you could build your clients using iOS or Android if you're in a Kotlin multi-platform project, for example. That really brings a lot of flexibility. And Ktor is really easy to start working with. It really takes advantage of Kotlin language features such as lambdas and DSLs, which makes it feel very concise. It makes it feel very easy to start working with. So Ktor is a really great Kotlin-first example of a web framework that lets you write both client and server code, leveraging the Kotlin that you already know. Next up, we have Spring Boot. Now, as I mentioned before, Spring Boot is a very popular framework for a Java backend development. And thankfully for us Kotlin developers, they have added first-class support for Kotlin as well. And when you go in to create a new Spring Boot application, you can choose Kotlin as the primary language for that default project. And when the project is created, the files will be created using Kotlin. And from there, you can take advantage of all the, the Kotlin flexibility and language features that you know and love if you're a Kotlin developer. If you want to learn more about Spring Boot, there's a great example of how to build a simple blogging application on the documentation, and I'll link to that in the description down below. The next framework on our list here is HTTP 4K. Now, this is one that I don't have any personal experience with, but when I reached out to the community about what other people were using to write uh, backend code with Kotlin, this one came up several times in the recommendations. Now, the project describes itself as an HTTP toolkit for sending and receiving HTTP requests built on simple Kotlin functions. And now there's a few things that really stick out to me about this project. It's designed to be extremely lightweight, having very few dependencies. It's also designed to really work off of a couple simple functions that are able to really route and manage the HTTP requests for you. 
making it very easy to reason about and understand how to structure the project, or at least that's how it seems to me from the documentation so far. It also really favors immutability, which in general as programmers we tend to like, so the fact that this is a core tenant of this framework is really intriguing to me. And then again, because it has such a light footprint, it's really designed to be extremely fast, which is a high priority for anyone writing backend services. So if HTTP 4K sounds interesting to you, I'll leave links in the description down below to the rationale page, which describes a bit about the project and what they're aiming for. And I'll also include a link to the quick start guide so that you can jump right in and start writing something with HTTP 4K if you're interested. Have you used HTTP 4K before? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, this is one I'm really interested to hear other people's experience with. It looks intriguing to me. and I'd love to know if it's worth checking out further. Okay, we've made it to the last one on our list. Uh, and this last one is Quarkus, which I have to say has the coolest name of the bunch. Now, Quarkus is a JVM-based uh, microservices framework for Kubernetes. And it's really designed to be blazing fast. That's really the, the key feature from what I've gathered talking with others that have used it and from browsing the documentation. It's really meant to be just extremely fast on startup and on man managing requests. And as of a recent uh, preview, it now has support for Kotlin. So if you're someone that's looking for a really highly performant JVM-based microservices solution, but you also want to use Kotlin, uh, Quarkus might be exactly what you're looking for. Now, again, I haven't had experience with this, but I had several people reach out to me and recommend it. Now, from my little bit of browsing, to me, this one looks like it's a little bit more heavy handed. It looks like it's a larger solution. And I think anytime that you're thinking about writing a service, you should really consider whether or not you need to jump into a microservices framework and the, the overhead that it comes with managing that. However, if you really do think that microservices and Kubernetes is the way to go for you, and you want to use Kotlin, it seems like Quarkus would be a good thing for you to check out and at least consider. So what do you think? Do you want to learn more about writing backend code using Kotlin? If you do, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're interested in. I'd really love to tailor future videos towards whatever the community here wants to know. Now, I want to take a second and go over a couple of frequently asked questions about the topic of server-side Kotlin in general. So question number one is simply, can you use Kotlin to write backend or server code? And now, as you might have guessed from my previous video or even the topic of this video, the answer is absolutely yes. There are several frameworks out there that empower you to write backend code with Kotlin. And now the next question is similar, but is, can you use Kotlin for web development? And again here, the answer is yes. And it kind of depends on what you mean by web development. So let's break it down. If you mean web in terms of, you know, backend services running on a server somewhere on the web, then again, yes, of course, that's essentially the topic of this video. But also if you mean maybe front end web development with a framework such as React, again, the answer is actually yes. You can write Kotlin code that is transpiled down to JavaScript, and you can generate typed bindings for popular JavaScript frameworks such as jQuery or React. So again, the answer is yes, whether you're doing front-end or back-end web development, you can leverage Kotlin if you want to. Okay, that's it for this quick overview of a few different frameworks that you can use to write server-side Kotlin. So what do you think about this whole idea of Kotlin for your back-end services? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you tried it? Uh, I would love to know what your experience has been once again. Please leave a comment down below if you found this interesting or if you have experience with any of these. It'll help me figure out what I want to learn and it'll also help me uh, better serve the community here by creating future content around what you're interested in. Now, if you found this useful, please give it a like. It really helps the channel. And if you want to stay up on future videos about Kotlin, Android development, or software development careers in general, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much all for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Until next time, devs.